nice to see you here back in the afternoon session. It's really great to have been working one year or the last year seeing all this uh, progress that we have made together as a community and it's really startling to be here. My name is Heinrich Schuchert. I'm working for Canonical as RISC V lead engineer. And let's start with the most important message first. Our management at Canonical really has decided RISC V is a first class Ubuntu architecture. We really want to give you all the same tools that you see for the other architectures. And to do this, of course, means first of all spinning out images for the hardware that has come uh, available. So it really started uh, in the last year when we supported the first boards that were on the market, the Unmatched, the Unleashed board, where we could run Linux on. But now we have released images for the next uh, boards, for the Vision 5 board, for the Allwinner D1, for the Zypeed, Lishi RV. So that boards that came on the market, we tried as fast as we could to bring you the distribution. And for us, when we spin out Ubuntu, it does not only mean that you get the packages, it also means that you get the kernel support and we want to get the same support that you see in all other architectures. When you think about what we need to decide uh, for going to a board support, important is of course that there's some schedule availability. We want to support boards that are reasonably priced but here come the really important issues. There must be some upstreaming activity. Canonical uh, and the Ubuntu community probably will not be able to do all the upstreaming. And this also means that there should only be a reasonable number of not upstream patches so that we can more easily spin a kernel and support a kernel for your board. And now we are, have the next boards that we are going to bring up in February. We want to bring out support for the microchip Polarfy Icicle Kit, and we are, have started work on the Star 5 Vision 5 2 board because that's currently the most powerful thing that you can buy, and it's at a very reasonable price, I think. But there are also some pain points with the hardware that we currently can get. The biggest pain point from it is that we see when we try to build packages is that we are missing the hypervisor extension. So we cannot run a VM uh, on RISC V with, uh, with good speed. And that means we are currently using x86 servers to build all the packages. And that, of course, limits capacity. We also have seen that many of the products are really short-lived. I mean, the images that we brought out for Unmatched and Unleashed, how far are they still relevant if you cannot buy the boards anymore? And if you look into performance, what we have reached now is the level of a Raspberry Pi 3. There's nothing really server-grade around. But we are um, thinking that will appear. We see those companies that are, want to go into the server space and want to be in the next year shipping out some hardware. Um, let's into, look into the software side of it. I just counted how many binary packages exist for different architectures, and if you put x86 uh, at 100%, you see 93% of the packages are available on RISC V, and um, ARM is somewhere in between the, the two. And, um, so you can do a lot of things already in this ecosystem. If it comes to development, you have Python available, OpenGDK, Node.js, Go, C, C++. There's one thing that is sticking out and that is, oops, I didn't want to go that far. That is uh, .NET, um, which currently is being available only on ARM and uh, on x86, and hopefully that will um, change at some time and allow us to build more packages, especially those that require this uh, runtime system. If you look into virtualization and containerization, we are spinning uh, images for QAMO, for Docker, and for LXD. 
um, so that you can easily run your containers in RISC-V. You can, of course, have the emulation also inside RISC-V. But that, of course, uh, needs now the hypervisor extension to be really uh, fast moving. When it comes to desktops, I've been running a desktop uh, GNOME, I've been running KDE, I've been running uh, XFCE, so all these desktops environments are also available for the ecosystem, and we are currently spinning uh, server images. You have to load those packages on extra, maybe at some time we will start spinning desktop images, but currently there is no system out there that's really that performant that you say it's your daily working instance of the operating system. One thing that has also been quite important for us is uh, Snapcraft. Or snaps are a way that you can containerize um, your applications, that uh, you can, like, they are separated like the apps that you know on, on your phone those snaps and you can easily download them from marketplace snapcraft.io and everybody in the community can publish their own software as a snap, if, especially that's useful if your library dependencies don't fit to the Ubuntu image that you want to run, but those snaps also can run on Fedora or any other big uh, distro. When we look into where we find Linux, I already said, okay, so you have server, desktop, IoT devices where you run, could run um, the distro or you could run uh, Ubuntu Core, which is a containerized version of Ubuntu. Um, we have the images for the VM and containers, but you also see, for instance, that um, DPUs or other accelerators are coming up in the ERISC-V ecosystem. And then you can ask yourself, okay, which sort of packages really make an impact in this world of accelerators or in the world of servers? And two packages that we have specifically been looking into in the last half year is DPDK and SPDK, which are, DPDK is for speeding up network, and SPDK is for speeding up NVMe access, especially NVMe over fibers. And why are these so uh, interesting? If you look at the normal uh, ways that you would interact with um, kernel or with your network card, you have an application which sends a packet which is copied into a packet buffer. There's a ring buffer which has all the management information where new packages have to be inserted into this uh, ring buffer and then only Linux can start accessing the network card, and the network card then again is copying into a packet buffer and back to the application, and that makes things not as fast as it could be, and uh, DPDK is all about solving this for the network space and N um, SPDK for the NVMe drives getting around this and make a much smaller picture where you say you have the application with the DPDK libraries running in user space and directly accessing the network card. And that's why we have been looking into these and they are really running on RISC-V. We have put them into so-called PPA, a repository that you can add to your Ubuntu installation. DPDK for risc uh, this RISC-V enabled will be available in the April release um, of Ubuntu. SPDK is currently available in the PPA that's mentioned on the slide. Uh, and we have also an article that describes how you can easily set it up. And yes, uh, uh, if you want to, more, want to more, uh, know more about Ubuntu on RISC-V, I've put some links into the slide decks that I've uploaded, and I hope that Ubuntu is really helping you to get, make your life easier developing all the RISC-V applications that you have in mind. So that brings us to the questions, if you have
Any questions? Yeah, you were asking whether you need um, user interrupts. So what the um, DPDK and SPDK do, they have uh, a thread that is constantly um, looking if there's no new data has arrived. So it's not interrupt based, so, but it's really using a full core, which is just all the time um, looking for new data. Yes, uh, from Docker Hub, you can download the official RISC-V images. Jammy is available, Kinetic is available. I guess also Focal would yeah. be available. So it's already on the, not only on the latest one, it's in the, uh, the latest ones as well. Yes, in, uh, in Docker Hub, you can download the Docker images that you need. The question was, um, how can the hardware people make it easy for us to spin an Ubuntu image that supports the hardware? And it's, as I said in my slides, it's really the starting the upstreaming. So, I mean, some hardware companies really have their own developers doing the upstreams, but there are also companies outside that can help you on this. Um, getting Linux patches up, getting U-boot patches up, if you use this for as for your firmware. But if there is nothing happening, probably we would decide that we have no chance to get Ubuntu running. So if somebody would say, I have here this uh, 5.4 kernel, which is running, but I could not even, <laughs> I don't not even have the commit history for you and please spin me an image, then unfortunately I have to say, no, I, we cannot do it. I don't see any other questions, then thanks a lot, and looking forward to the next talk. <laughs>